at the bottom, you will find your top tray. This tray has nine each of the unit bars, one through nine. It also has 10 of the 10 bars and 100 square. And I'm showing it to you first because we always start working with the manipulatives first. You will find smiley face books. These can be easily identified by the smiley face on the front. There are five different areas for smiley face. Counting, which is your place value, addition in brown, subtraction, multiplication, and division. There are 10 level one algebra books. Now you may think that's strange, but even young children enjoy starting out with algebra. In addition, you have the level one teacher's manual, which is coded to our level one books. Now you have the algebra for level one, and so you will be working in that strand in this manual, and you can look ahead and see what will be coming up. Before we start working with the manipulatives, I want to discuss a few basic ideas that are underlying principles for Mortensen math. I want you to take a moment and think about thinking. What does that involve? It involves imagining. It involves visualizing. Take some time and look up the definition of thinking. One definition I found was visualizing possibilities. Visualizing, imagining. What do we need to be able to do that? We need experience and we need to have seen things, right? Once the math is so visual and it provides children with lots of experiences in math. Another important thing to think about is how do children learn language? Well, they're born, they come into the world, and people are talking all around them. They are in a language-rich environment. They hear words. They try to say those words. And if they don't say it right, what do we do as adults do? We say it correctly for them. And how do they learn to speak in sentences? Do we teach them grammar before they're five years old? No. What we do is we just talk normally. And they pick up sentence structure. Before they know what a noun or a verb is, they're using them. Why? How do they do that? All children around the world are born with a natural problem-solving ability. And it's with this problem-solving ability that they pick up patterns in languages. Whether it's English or Spanish or French or Japanese, they pick up those patterns. And that's why it makes it so easy for children to learn languages at an early age. They hear things and then they have a sense of what is right, what sounds right but they have that natural ability to discover those patterns from being in a language-rich environment. We want mathematics to be the same way. We want to give them the tools and to make it intellectually exciting for them so that they can discover the beauty and the patterns of mathematics. Now you have all these materials in front of you. Let's talk about how you're going to start with children of different ages. With four to seven year olds, you will probably start them out working in the smiley face books, then doing some problems in algebra and addition facts mastery, and saving the multiplication facts mastery until later. With eight to 10 year olds, you have a choice. You can start them in algebra or smiley face, or addition or multiplication facts mastery because they've already been exposed to a lot of mathematics. The children 11 years old and up, you may want to start them out in the algebra or multiplication facts mastery. Then go back and work with a smiley face because algebra is just generalized arithmetic. And once they've gotten this boost by working in algebra and they've done a few books, then it's going to be fun for them to see the specific case of how they can use these same materials to make arithmetic fun. We're going
going to assume in this video that children already know how to count. How many? One. How many do I have in my hand this time? One again. And this time? It's also one. Now, pick up this bar. How many do you have in your hand? It's one. And here, if a young child is looking at this from a distance, what are they automatically going to say? One. And they may not even be looking at it from a distance. But they're all one. There is something different. They're different kinds. And they have different names. Just as this has a name that's different from this. Well, let's name these. This is a unit. This is a 10. This is a 100. Now, we have just started what we call the three-period lesson. The first part, this is, is where we identify it for the child. You know, you've done the three-period lesson before. When you taught your children parts of the body, certainly. You identified it for them first. And what was the next thing that you did? The next thing was you had them point to the parts of the body, right? That's our show me phase. So we would say, with these in front of the child, hold up a 10. Point two, a unit. Hold 100 by your ear. You see, there are all sorts of crazy fun things that we can do that make the three-peer lesson a little more interesting and exciting. But you know, when children are first learning things, it's exciting in itself. In a written format, this is, is where we have a picture and a label. The show me is where they might match an item to a name or pick it out, a multiple choice type setting. The smiley face books are really done in a show me format. And the last part is what is this? This is where the child has heard the name in the this is and the show me parts of the lesson. Now the child has had an opportunity to internalize that and now the child is asked to give the name. What is this? Hundred. What is this? Unit. What is this? Ten. If the child has any trouble at any part, what are you going to do? You just go back to the part before it. So if when you said, show me ten, the child pointed to this, you would say, this is a unit, this is ten, this is hundred. Real simple. Very easy. The same thing that they've been used to you're doing when they're learning. They're not dumb because they couldn't do that. They just hadn't had enough chance to hear those words and have them become familiar to them. I want you to get out some materials just as I have. And if you don't have those materials in front of you, you need to pause the camera and go get them. Remember, Math is not a spectator sport, and you're going to learn far more by working with a manipulatist yourself. In the video, I'm going to model some ways that you might be working with children, as well as teaching you some ideas for working with children and important verbalizations, and also teach you to work with them. Because if you, like I, went to school and had not worked with manipulatists, this is different for you, and you need the experience as well. With the materials in front of you, pick up two. Some of you may have picked up these. Some other people may have picked up these, or you might imagine that a child might pick up these. Well, how can I get you to pick up what I want? You need to know what kind, right? Pick up two of the unit's kind. Very easy now. Pick up two of the tens kind. Right here. 
pick up one of the hundredth kind. Here. Three of the tenth kind. Here. And you see some ways that you can start working with older children in doing this type of problems. Now, let's clear this off and focus on these. You're working with a very young child at this point. Now, we're assuming that the child can count from one to nine. We need to make sure that the child is good at identifying this is one, this is two, this is three. You can do all sorts of things with that. You might have a pile of these in one place in your home or in your classroom and ask the child to go get one or two or three units or five units or eight units, just checking. They're going to have a good time doing that and showing you. You can do little fast races to see how fast they can gather those up and that type of thing as well. Now, they've done that. Suppose you're working with a young child who does not yet know their numerals. We're going to do exactly the same thing in identifying the numerals that we did in identifying our unit 10 and 100. We need to do a three-period lesson. I'm going to model this with just three cards, but of course you would start out with more than that. This is a one, this is a two, this is a three. Hold up two. Point to three. Point to one. You see, the child has heard those words. They're very familiar. Now, they're learning those symbols. The next thing you may want to do is match those with the bars. So, can you show me one bar? Can you show me two units? Three units? And the child is doing that. Another fun thing to do is to show them the card or hand them the card, let them go get those blocks, bring them to you. After doing that a few times where they took the card with them, then just show them the card and let them go get it. This develops their visual memory. Before when we told them it helped develop their auditory memory, showing it to them, then letting them go get it develops their visual memory. Now that they've done that and had fun counting the blocks and that sort of thing, it's time to work in smiley face counting book one. Get out your book. It's the blue one. And let's look at the first page. You see here that the child just needs to count. They see that it's three, and where there is a three, a smiley face has been drawn. And if the child wants, they can put frownies where it was not the right response. And the next one, the child can count and see that it's five. Where is the numeral for five? It's right here. And that's just barely written in so the child can trace over that and make a smiley. Next, we have one that the child must fill out on their own. Two. Two. Let me point out that each of these books is 20 or 21 pages long. It's not going to take a child very long to finish that, is it? It may take the young children a day or two. The older ones, it may take just a few minutes. But it's been good practice for them. Now, if you're working with some 9, 11-year-olds, you may just have them go through a page or two and do some problems verbally. That's fine. because. Our goal is for them to get the concept and understand that those are units. Now, let's move on. How many do I have? One, two, three, four. But what kind is that? It's the tens kind, and I need a way of showing that. We put this zero here. Four with a zero tells us we have four. This tells us it's the tens kind. 
And we're going to refer to this as four tens. Later, after the child understands that, when they see that, we'll go through and we'll give them some new names. We can also call this 40. We can also call five tens 50. And you know what? They've heard those words before. They've used those words before. So now all they're doing is attaching a lot of meaning to some words that were just words that they could say probably in sequence. Now they have meaning. Now we're looking at Smiley Face Counting, Book 2. What does the child need to do? First of all, they need to understand that these represent 10 bars. And then they just count. One, two, three. Three tens. This one is the way we write three tens, and we see a smiley face. The next problem. One, two. Two tens. We write two tens this way, and the smiley face is partially filled in for the student. Now, the next problem they do on their own. One, two, three, four tens, and it's right here. The child fills in the smiley face. Again, we can see how easy it is for the child to be successful. Now, let's add a little variety. Suppose that you had two chocolate chip cookies and your friend had three chocolate chip cookies and you decided to put them all together to save them to have after supper. What have we got? Here's a problem where we're identifying the two that we have and the three that our friend has. And let's look at this in our Smiley Face edition. This is book one. This is the one with the brown cover. And here is this problem where I have two and my friend has three. And I'm just identifying this problem. Here it is, two plus three. Actually, I'm just practicing counting. And if you want, you can extend this book beyond just identifying the problem to well, how many would we have if we put it all together? It would be five. For the younger children, you just do that out loud. For older ones, you might want to have them write it. So you get a double use out of these particular books. Notice that I built this problem, or uh, that's what I'm going to do first, or if I'm working with the child after they've seen it, then I'm going to say, well, you get out this many. So down here, what are they going to do? They're going to get out this many. And they're just offset to make it easier to count. And they're also going to get out this many. How many do we have here? Five. And we're going to put with that two. Here it is. Maybe my friend had five marbles and I had two. And this is a picture of what we're going to do in the problem. We have a saying in Mortensen Math that what is the question is more important than what is the answer. Think about it. If you don't understand the question, how could you possibly figure out the answer? Sure, it's possible, but it's not very likely. The smiley face books are really directed toward this. You will see this in the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But as you proceed onward in these books, you will see that they do much, much more than that. But they do start the child out by identifying what is the question.